Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Vargas. I'm the owner of Art Studio 928, and welcome today. Um, we've still got some people who are coming, so we'll let them get in. In the meantime, uh, I'd like to say hi to Courtney and Laura Cobb if she's here, because we've been collaborating, and also Melissa as well. So uh, yeah, we've got a few uh, people who are still arriving. And um, first thing I want to check is, can everybody hear me? You can just kind of wave yes. if you can. Yay, yay. Technical difficulties are out of the way. OK, so good. So uh, yeah, so I'm here today with my producer, who also happens to double as my son, Danny Vargas, in the background. He's going to be with us doing trivia and um, checking on any questions you might have. If you're having any technical issues, just kind of type them in the chat and um, we'll deal with them for you. So yeah, we're here in Chicago freezing our little tootsies off. <laughs> you guys doing okay? You got your you got your cocktails or your bottle of water with you? <laughs> Courtney, did you want to make some announcements um, after we get a few, a couple more people in? Hey, everybody, can you hear me? Um, I don't have any announcements, ladies. I see Melissa has her drink. My husband's about to pour me a glass of wine. Whatever you ladies got, uh, just sit back and enjoy. All right. Good, 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 good. So yeah, we're here trying to stay warm here in LaGrange. Um, I don't normally wear a sweater, but today I brought one with me just in case. Um, but yeah, we're making that transition from what, a 55 degree day yesterday um, to what, 35 today? So yeah, it's a 20, 20 degree drop in temperature. Um, so everybody's got their drink. I'm gonna check on a couple other items. Um, we've already established that you can hear me and that's the most important thing and that you can see me. Um, let me just check the count and um, then I'll decide whether we can go on or not. Let's see, we're at, we're at 16. I'd like to get to at least 20 since we have uh, 43 people registered for today. So uh, let's give them um, a couple more minutes. So Cheryl, we have one group um, under Dorothy Guthrie. I'm not sure how many people, but there's multiple people at that location. So that might give us oh. a little oh. bit more. Oh, okay. Hey, Dorothy, can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself so we can check in with how many people you have? <laughs> it looks like a little party going on over there, ladies. <laughs> How many do you have there, Dorothy? Uh, six. Six. Okay, that's the consensus right there. <laughs> All right, so we're ready to get started. Uh, do you have a um, Bluetooth or anything to, to connect? Do you have so you have you can connect it to a speaker. Oh, okay. I'm listening to someone else's instructions. I won't do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go through what you should have in front of you outside of your cocktail or your bottle of water, okay? So um, you should have your envelope, your little cellophane envelope. And for now, I'm gonna mute everybody because I get confused when I, <laughs> I can't always chalk, talk and chew gum at the same time, so forgive me. Um, I'm still hearing people. Let me mute Dorothy. There we go. All right. Now, now I'm no longer confused. All right. Now I can think. So the first thing that you should have is your cellophane envelope. Um, it'll have your reference image. Hi. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. This is... Um, we're having audio. We can't hear you quite well, so we're trying to find a speaker real quick. Did you just okay. get two minutes? Okay. Thank you. Just hold sure. two minutes. Okay. Yes, Courtney. 
<laughs> How about while we're waiting for those yes, guys, let's have a trivia question. They're Definitely. figuring out their audio. I, I, I don't know what happened to me. I can't pull myself up for some reason. Um, is that Carl? Carl's like yes, that. that's Carl. Yes. That is me. Who's me? Say your name. Charmaine Sears. Okay, so if you can't see yourself, that you, see, that you don't, I have to mute you because I'm hearing you. Uh, go ahead, could you mute me, please? Hold on just one second. I'm gonna Never mind, I can do Okay, let me just give this instruction. I know you might have problems, so I'm going to go ahead and try to help you. So if you can't see yourself, if you look at the little, there's a little black bar that probably says talking because it hears me talk, right? So to the left of that is like a minus sign. Then there's two rectangle or one rectangle, then two rectangles st stacked on top of each other, and then um, uh, a grid of squares. So if you click on the grid of squares, that should allow you to see yourself and everyone else. So let me know in the chat if that worked for you. And Danny's going to check the chat for me. And I guess I will check too while we're sitting and waiting. Yes, she said it worked. She said it worked? Okay, yay. Awesome, awesome. And Dorothy, you're, you guys are still working it out. No need to answer. I can see you're still working it out. Okay, so Danny, while we're waiting, how about if we have a trivia question to get these girls, these ladies uh, warmed up? It's going to flash across the stream in just a minute. Move this out of the way so I can see too. Okay, so our trivia question to start off the day is what is the number one cookie in the US? Is it Chips Ahoy, uh, Milano, Girl Scout Thin Mints, or Oreo? Just in, unmute yourself to answer or put it in the chat. Girl Scout. D, there's an Oreo, there's a Thin Mints, there's an Oreo. Big fan of Thin Mints over here. Yes, it's Oreo. Ding, 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 ding. All right, Girl Scout. I know, Nikita, I can eat like a whole box of Thin Mints. Those are my jam. All right, let's do another one, Danny. Okay. Which of the following songs is not a song by TLC? Is it Creep, Waterfalls, Say My Name, or No Scrubs? Say my name. Woo, those answers came flying in. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Awesome. All right. Let's see what do we got here. We all, okay. Let's pick one more. And the question is, which hip hop duo used the line, shake it like a Polaroid picture? Is it the Goody Mob, the Black Eyed Peas, the Black Eyed Peas, Organized Noise, or Outcast? Outcast. There's a Nikita for a win. Her name is Nikita and her last name is Win. Of course, that's the right answer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> outstanding all right i'll tell you what guys we're 10 minutes into your program we don't want you to lose any painting time so what here's the here's the good part all right this is being recorded so no matter even if you have to catch up you can still catch up 
Okay. So um, I will send not only the recording of today, but also photographs that we take at the end of the program. So nobody misses anything. All right. But for those ladies who are dying to put some paint on the canvas, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. So let me just go through the list of inventory of things you should have. And then maybe by then Dorothy and the gang will be able to join us with audio. Okay, so um, wait a minute. She said they can't. She can hear me. If you can hear me, you're good. I mean, for now, you could just put your answers in the chat if that's the way it is. Just just put your answers in the chat, and then hopefully by that time you'll you'll um, catch up in terms of. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. So yes, you should have this little cellophane envelope with the envelope with the uh, image that we're going to paint today. And by the way, you guys, you are the first to paint this image. Um, it's actually a kind of a self portrait, something I did in the winter of last year, because artists never get a chance to paint, especially if you have an art business, you never get a chance to paint unless you're painting with people like you, which is like the fun time of my job. Okay, so um, anyway, yeah, I did this in December because I just wanted to paint. So I did this and a couple other ones and people have been asking to paint this, but I didn't, I wasn't ready. And then um, Laura asked me about this one. I was like, okay, okay, finally we're gonna do it. So you should have this image. You should have, um, this is my promotional material, which is not important. And then um, you should have the traceable, and you should have some carbon paper, okay? I'm gonna come back to that carbon paper because that's really important. Next thing you should have is some brand new brushes, not old beat up ones like mine, um, but at least this lets you know that these are a good quality brush. They'll last through many paintings as long as you rinse them out, lay them down flat on your paper towel, which is another thing you need if you don't have them already, and then just let the um, paper towel drink the water out of the brush. Um, also, you should have a palette knife or wooden spatula, and this is used to pick up the paint out of the little tubs that you have. And then you should have a number 12 round brush, which is going to help us get into those little tiny little areas uh, in the painting. And of course, you need to have a canvas. You'll have uh, two palette trays. So we use one for light colors and one for dark. And then you should have some custom flesh color that I created just for this painting. You should have some turquoise, white, red, yellow, and black. Okay, so we're gonna put these off to the side. I'll put these off to the side for now. Um, don't forget your paper towels. Don't forget a container of water or two have a, a container of water for your light colors and one for your dark colors. So I have two, because it's a lot easier to just change water when it's right there. And um, I think that's everything else. Yeah, you got your paper towel and uh, yeah, basically we're, basically we're ready to paint. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the carbon paper. Um, and your canvas. So the carbon paper has a shiny side and a dull side. The shiny side is the action side, right? This is the side that you want on the canvas. So shiny side down, shiny sides down, shiny side down. If you don't put the shiny side down, you'll find that you did a lot of work in tracing and it doesn't show up on the canvas, okay? So you wanna make sure you have the shiny side down. And so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be super fun because we get to paint willy-nilly, all right? Willy-nilly is just when you just paint without a care in the world, all right? So we're gonna take our palette knife or palette or wooden palette and use that to pick up some white Okay, we're gonna just dig in here and pull out a pretty good amount, like about a half a teaspoon. If you bake, you know this is about a half a teaspoon, right? Then I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife. Actually, I'm gonna wipe this on the side. I don't wanna lose that paint. 
And then I'm gonna wipe my palette knife off with my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up the turquoise. And I'm gonna pick up oh, about, maybe about the same amount. Okay, and I'm not gonna waste this. I'm gonna kind of take it and scrape it off on the sides like that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is take that number 14 brush. That's the one with the flat edge. And we're gonna dip it in our water. Tap off the excess water and put it directly into the paint. So here's what we're gonna do. So you notice in your original image, there's like this streaky little pattern going on. That's what we wanna try to create. So we're really not gonna blend these two colors together. So make sure you put them kind of close together, but if you didn't, that's okay. You can just grab on both sides like this, okay? It could be a little soupy because it needs to be a little soupy so it spreads really well, all right? So we don't want to blend it together. We want both of those colors to kind of act independently. So watch what happens. We're just laying that down. It's kind of streaky, right? That's what we want. Streaky. More water, because we want to keep this flowing like ink. So there's some dark paint on one side, lighter paint on the other. I'm going to come up the other direction, like so. That's why it's important too that you have your hair dryer nearby. This time, let's just pick up a little white on its own and just kind of run that next to what we just painted. Don't overwork it, just do one stroke. Notice that when I, when I make these strokes, this is kind of important. So when I make these strokes, I just take it from one end of the canvas to the other. One long stroke. So yeah, so we want to pick up these two colors, but we don't want to blend them together. We want them streaky. Straight line, up and down, one long stroke. And we'll let you get those backgrounds going. And if you're having trouble, like if you get the streaks like this, that means you just need a little more water in your brush. And also don't forget to take the, the color all the way to the edge of your canvas because if you want to hang your picture you want it to look a hundred percent finished right so you want to go all the way to the edge okay can you just slow down for just a second we took the short bus just slow down <laughs> um oh okay the short bus okay so yeah, so just take your brush and just push that color back and forth. And mix your brush with both colors and just leave it streaky. Try not to blend it together. Top to bottom, up and down. Okay, so how's that going? Anyone having any problems with that, the stroke? Can you see the streaks? Just make sure that you don't blend the colors together too much and you'll be fine. Keep them kind of separate if you can. And it's okay if like one time you go back and you pick up more white and less blue. So we got another trivia question. So name the TV show. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. <laughs> like, do I really need to read the answers on this one? Okay, so House of Pain, Bernie Mac, a Smart Guy, or Fresh Prince. I think there's a consensus there. Are we doing these lines across the whole canvas? 
up and down in a straight up and down. So if you can watch on just taking the paintbrush and dragging it up and down. Try not to stop in the middle. Yes, across the whole canvas or? Up and down across the whole canvas. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And if you're having trouble with, you know, getting the white spaces in the, in the middle, that just means you need to add a little more water. Okay. So yeah, just keep your arm moving up and down the canvas. Which astrological sign, oh wait, is the crab? Is it Pisces, Aquarius, Cancer, or Virgo? Let's see, I think they're putting the answers in the chat. Oh, we got a... A D, a C, two C's. Answer is cancer. All right. All right, so yeah, just take, start at the top and then just pull your brush down, up and down the canvas. And we're not going for a consistent color, just streaks of color. So it's, there's nothing exact about it. This is, like I said, your opportunity to paint willy nilly. You can even go back and just put some solid turquoise in there in the middle. And you can really press down on your brush to get the paint out. And again, dip your paint or your paintbrush in water each time so you can have a nice fluid consistency. And yes, just keep going up and down the canvas. Okay, so oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, which ingredient directly influences the color of, is it beer? Of beer. Is it wheat, water, malt, or hops? Wheat. Hops. Nikita said wheat. Somebody said hops. Oh, somebody said C. What's oh malt? Okay. Now I'm just gonna pick up some straight turquoise for some contrast. And just keep moving that up and down. Just don't blend it too much till it turns to solid um, turquoise. You want to leave some streaks. Leave those streaks in there. Even if you have to go back and pick up just some pure white by itself, just go in and pull in some white. And I'll show you how to blend that in in just a second. So the other thing your number 12 brush does, take a look at this. So the other thing your number 12 brush does is it, I'm sorry, 14 brush does, is it turns into like a chisel. So if you pick up paint on both sides like this, When you're done, you should have a nice chisel on the end, like very sharp. So that helps you when you're going in to make lines like this. Here, let me pick up some more. You gotta have enough paint on your brush first. And now I'm gonna rinse this brush completely out so there's no paint. It's still kind of wet. And I'm just going to lay it on top of those lines that I previously made. And just kind of blend them out a little bit. Just blend those streaks out. 
Does that make sense? Okay, let me move this up a little bit so you can see it a little better or down. There we go. Okay. All right. How you guys doing? The the Maguire or the Guthrie gang, how you guys doing? Let's check in with you. We're doing pretty good right now. Good. Yeah. So we haven't traced anything and we haven't done, we're just doing the background now. Okay. That's all yep. I care about. All right. There we go. So I will actually kind of just narrate what the next step is going to be. So um, when I go to the next step, and if you're still working on it, that's okay. I'm still with you. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. So um, the next thing that we're going to do after you get some nice streaks going on is we're going to dry the canvas. Okay. And the reason for that is because we're going to trace our bubbles. Okay. And our face or our head onto the canvas. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is the bubbles. We'll paint the bubbles first because they'll need two layers because we're actually um, painting a uh, light color on top of a more deep, robust color. So we'll need two coats. So the bubbles will be the first thing we paint. You don't have to remember this. I'm going to repeat it. Um, and then the next thing we'll do is to paint the skin tones, which the skin tone color was mixed, especially for this painting. And I will show you how to do it so that it is what you want at the end. Uh, let's see what else. And then after that, we go to the hair and then we do the earrings and the ears, the last thing. So when you do your tracing, and I will repeat this again, but I just wanna say it more than one time, when we trace the face, when we trace the face and everything here and the bubbles and the eyelash, we're not going to trace the ear. We're going to do the ear last. Okay, I'll say that again. We're going to trace all everything in this image except the ear. Okay, and the earring. Because we don't have to worry, we don't want to have to worry about painting the flesh and having to worry about, you know, well, where does the ear come in? <laughs> okay, so um, it's a layering thing. That's what we do in uh, acrylic paint. All right, so while you guys are still painting, I'm gonna dry and then Danny's gonna pop up a trivia question on the screen for you to contemplate. Are, are you gonna just quickly say how you're gonna blow dry? Are you just taking a blow dryer and holding it over the, pick, the paint, the canvas? Yeah, it's um, four inches, four to six oh. inches over the canvas so that you don't burn it. Um, but yeah, and then you kind of keep the, the, the hair, hair dryer moving. You'll see me doing it. It'll make sense.
Okay, so I'm back. So I forgot to do my check-in. What's everybody drinking on tonight? Or this afternoon? <laughs> we got some sangria in the house. Danny, how about a glass of sangria? Have you tried Trader Joe's? Okay, so there was this Sutter Home uh, sangria that I liked, uh, but it was like, I don't know, like six or seven dollars for a four pack. There's little, like a glass of wine for each little bottle. So anyway, I always had to search for it because it was so good, this Sutter Home Sangria, that I could never find it. So I asked Trader Joe's, I was in there the other day, I asked the manager, I said, what do you guys have? Do you have sangria? And they said, well, we have this sangria in the box. And I'm like, oh, sangria in the box, that doesn't sound good. And, um, but it was awesome, it was awesome. And it's really affordable, it's like $11. And supposedly you get three 750 milligram bottles. Is that right? Milliliters, milliliters, uh, bottles out of it. It's amazing. So anyway, I'm going to unmute people so I can hear. What are y'all drinking on? Tell me. It says mute all out here, but I don't see unmute. You guys can talk. Are you talking? Let's see. Who's, maybe they're answering. In the oh, Rosé. Rosé all day for these ladies. Okay. <laughs> so, hi. I'm, I'm not really big into, like, beer and alcohol and all that. But someone was handing these out, little adult trick-or-treat favors last night. So I took one, and it's um, White Claw. Mm. Hard seltzer. Natural lime. It's the first time having it, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> good, 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 good. Sounds tasty and refreshing. So mostly rosé. We got any beer drinkers? Anybody drinking brandy, scotch, whiskey? <laughs> oh, Y'all got to work tomorrow. I was like, no, we're not drinking whiskey. All right. So we're going to, we did have a trivia question. What happened to it, Danny? Ah, okay. We got our, let's see, next color is to paint. So let's see what we're going to brown. So I think I want to take a new palette tray to mix this color or to put this color out. All right. What is the only state to grow coffee beans? Is it Florida, Hawaii? California or Louisiana? Any guesses? Okay, we got B, B, Hawaii. All Bs. It's consensus. The answer is ding, ding, ding. It's B. Awesome, well done. So another bit of little information you guys probably don't really care about, but I thought it was interesting to share with you is that um, I've been contacted at least four times by different Jack and Jill organizations. And I think that's the other reason why when um, Courtney said she wanted to paint this image, um, I said yes to it. Because even though I was contacted all those other times, you guys are the first ones to book with us. So yay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. Okay, so what is the only edible food that never expires? Is it white rice, honey, rye, or barley? White rice, honey, rye, or barley? Let's see what you're saying about that. Okay, is that Kim? She said D. And uh, rye, C, A, white rice. Oh, someone said B, honey, Courtney. Okay, Jennifer said D, barley. And the answer is B, honey. <laughs> yeah, they said they found honey in uh, Egyptian tombs that was still edible. 
So I find that like freaky, freaky amazing. Hey Cheryl, I have a I have a prize for the winner. First person to answer in the chat on your next trivia question. Ooh, ding, 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 ding. Oh, we gotta make, wait a minute. I'm gonna go on private mute here so we can pick a good one for ya. Hold on. All right, we got your question, Courtney. Here we go. Question is, what condiment was sold in the 1830s as a medicine? Was it soy sauce, ranch dressing, maple syrup, or ketchup? C, C, C. Okay, we got some C's. Bunch of C's. Is that everybody, you all weighing in? This is for a prize, so make sure you answer this question. Get your chat window open. We're going to give you another 30 seconds. Come on, Benina. I see you getting to the table. Come on. <laughs> the question is, what condiment was sold in the 1830s as a medicine? Was it soy sauce, ranch dressing, maple syrup, or ketchup? And this gets a prize, so. You want to answer this one. So we got C's, more C's. Okay. All right, Courtney, I'll let you cut off the, when we'll stop accepting answers. All right, you can go ahead and give us the answer and let's see who answered first. Okay. And the answer is D, ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think it was that um, Jennifer Noel. Did you answer ketchup D? Jennifer, can you come off mute? No, yeah, no, that wasn't me for this one. I, I was. Okay, so you were the last one. Let's see. Yep. Let's see. Kelly Marshall. Yep, that's Kelly name. Ooh. Amy Lambert answered D. Yep. Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> Yay, congratulations, Amy. Ke well, wait, Kelly answered first, though. Kelly, did you answer D for ketchup? I did. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't see that. It must have gone really fast past me. Yeah. Okay. Good job. I did. Good job. Yeah. Good job, both ladies. Hey, Kelly, pick a number one, two, three, or four. Three. Did you say three? Yes. All right. Kelly, I don't know what's in it. I have to oh. wait, but this is this is bag number three. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you. And you have another one to give away, or is that it for this round? Three more, Cheryl. Okay, sounds good. All right, we'll keep moving along. All right, so I hope that gave uh, people a little more time to get their backgrounds uh, all ready for the next step. And if did they we, are, then did we already yeah. trace? No, we haven't traced yet. But if you have, that's good. I mean, it should be on top of the background. All right, so here's what we're gonna do next. Remember what I said about shiny side down with your black piece of carbon paper. There's a dull side and a shiny side. And I know that sounds repetitive for me to keep repeating it, but it's a terrible feeling when you've done all your tracing and then you find out it's on the back of your traceable image. So shiny side down, shiny side down. <laughs> One more time for the peanut gallery, shiny side down. All right, so we're gonna line up this carbon paper to the bottom and the left edge of the canvas, okay? Oops. And then we're gonna take our tracing paper and line that directly on top of the carbon paper and line up the ends so that it's all even. You'll have a little overhang right here, but that's fine because it's just gonna get covered up with curly hair, all right? So you'll need a pencil or a pen. I probably should have said that first, so 
if you have your hand already in place, I'll wait a second for you to get a pen or a pencil. A pen works best, but a pencil is fine. Okay, so the trick about tracing is this. So you wanna make sure that once you line everything up, that you keep one hand down on the canvas, the tracing paper and the carbon at once. Make sure you hold down at least with one hand everything and don't let it move. If you wanna check your progress, lift up the tracing paper while you're still holding your hand on the canvas, okay? So holding your hand down, lift up the edge of the canvas and then lift up the tracing, or I'm sorry, the um, lift up the tracing paper and then lift up the carbon paper and you can see how you've done, all right? So it's easier just to lay it back down. Okay, so let's start on the left and move to the right. And all you do is just put your pencil or pen right at the starting point of the circle and just follow that line very slowly. You don't need a lot of pressure. And yeah, you can just keep that moving around. Hey, Courtney, do you still have two um, accounts open right now because I think that's why you were getting feedback um, because I'd like to unmute you guys so you can interact with each other. Um, I, I closed that other one. Okay, good. So if I unmute you now, we shouldn't get that feedback we were getting before and then that way you guys can talk and, you know, enjoy others company. So let me go through and just, oh, Danny, can you do that for me? Unmute everybody. Okay, while he's making that happen, I'm gonna go back to tracing. And hopefully you got a little ahead of me, so I'm behind you. So yeah, just follow those lines around, nice and slow. Keep your hand down on the canvas and just rotate your wrist to follow. We have you. conversations before. And they don't. Right away. Is it cold out there? The host would like to unmute you. Hi. Hey, Eddie. <laughs> oh, well, see, I thought you guys were talking to each other, but I see the background noise is kind of cooking back there. Yeah, we got it. Unfortunately. All right, well, maybe that's not going to work with, with life going on in the background so intensely. We'll just let you unmute yourselves as you'd like to speak, but feel free to at any time, okay? So I'm gonna keep going with my circles. And now I'm moving over to the face, same thing. Don't have to press too hard. Oh, you have another question? Oh, 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 it's coming. All right. So we're not tracing the ear or the earring. Those are my pearls. I always wear little pearls. And the hairline. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use your number 12 brush. It's the next brush we're gonna use. Okay, so what is a group of turkeys called? Is it a clutch, a rafter, or a brood, or a peep? What is a group of turkeys called? A clutch, rafter, brood, or a peep? Courtney said A. Uh, Linda said A. And those are all the guesses, I guess. And the answer is a rafter. A rafter. Oh, Carl's iPad got it at the last minute. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right, so I'm checking to make sure that my lines transferred as I wanted them to. 
And I'm okay with that because I know this is all going to be curly hair, so I don't care so much. It's just kind of giving me um, some lines of guidance. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, put in this eyelash. And then we're going to come back and do this last, okay? So it's going to make sense to you right now. It may not, but um, there's a method to the madness. All right, let's see. Oh, we got a little circle here. Okay, so we get to mix pink. Okay, before anybody tries to mix pink, take a sip. Cheers. <laughs> take a sip. Mm. Mm hmm. Good stuff, Maynard. All right. So we are going to need our palette knife. Okay, wipe it off on your paper towel. Wait, wait, wait. Am I the only one that's going slow tracing? <laughs> we haven't tra Oh, no, no you're not. Jump, you're not. Probably other people are still tracing too. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So just take your time. We're not going anywhere without you. But you can hear, you can listen. So, cause you'll probably want to hear this more than once and I will repeat it. So um, we're gonna take, we're gonna start with our white. And so we're using about what, that's about a quarter of a teaspoon. Who bakes in the group? Raise your hand. Nikita Jafara? I, I butchered your name. Jafaria. 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 Okay. That's a beautiful no name. <laughs> okay. So we got some bakers so y'all can identify. Now, when I say a pinch, that's what I mean, a pinch. You know what a pinch is, right? It's like when they say put a pinch of salt, I'm like, are you kidding? Why put salt if you're going to put a pinch? But you do know what I mean. It means a very, very small amount. So that's what I'm referencing when I start talking about red because we're about to make pink, right? So I'm going to take out about this much pink. And I'm going to put it down on the side. We always put it to the side. The reason why we do that is so we don't overwhelm the color we're trying to blend, right? So let's take a little bit of that red. Like, uh, this is more of a smidgen. It's not a dash, it's a smidgen. And we're gonna like even take a little less than that. So just the very tip of the knife and blend that into the white. And excuse me, you did say we're not tracing the ear or earring, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, so we're mixing this together and this is how you get pink. It's not equal parts. It's if you take a half a teaspoon of white and you put a 16th of a teaspoon of red, not even, it's, it's, it's a smidgen or a dash. It can't be anywhere near a, a eighth of a teaspoon. It would be too much. So this is what we're going for, this kind of Pepto-Bismol you look in pink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can make yours brighter if you want by going over again and watch how much red I pick up. It's like the, you know, the end of a pencil or something. So that's how you control hues. They call these hues. So this is a hue of pink. Okay. If, if this doesn't satisfy you and you want to make it, you know, more intense, you do the same thing again. But the, the good thing about doing it this way is that you're in control of how intense the color becomes, right? And it doesn't have to be exactly like my painting. It's your painting. It's going to have, you know, hang in your house or in your office. I mean, I hope you're, you're feeling proud enough to do that. Okay, so that's a nice smooth Pepto-Bismol color, right? So I'm going to take my number 12 brush. So the number 12 brush is pretty cool. So it's a round brush. And how we use it is this. So I, whatever you're doing, if you could stop just a minute to take a, take a look at this, because it's really important. We're taking our water. I'm taking my little dog food can of water <laughs> and I, I'm tapping off the excess water. Okay, can you see that? So if there's no water dripping out. Okay, maybe a little drop. A little drop fell out of there and that's it. 
that's how much water I have in my brush. Now I'm going to take this over to my palette and I'm going to let that water from my brush create like a uh, inky consistency, like a nice ink, like a calligrapher is what you're going for here, right? So the next thing we want to do is twirl the paint, twirl your paintbrush. We're just twisting it using the thumb and forefinger. We're just kind of twisting it till we get a point. You see that point? So there's two little hairs on the tip of this brush, maybe one, maybe six, but it's just one little point. That's what we're going to use to paint in these small spaces. We're using a stroke that is so light that we're not putting pressure. Okay, we're doing this. Okay, we're barely touching the surface of the canvas. Because what happens if you press harder is you get this. And when you're painting in a small circle, you don't want to press down this hard. For the smaller circles, you, or for the larger circles, you will. But for the smaller ones, we want to make sure we have a nice inky consistency and we're, we're just barely touching the canvas to fit in that space. All right? Okay, back to painting. All right, so I'm going to go over here and hit this, this little guy right here. He's kind of a medium size. I'm using the tip of my paintbrush so I can stay in the lines. And this is going to take two coats. This is why we're doing this first. Okay? So there's one. Are we ready for another trivia question? I think I need a breather after all that instruction. Let's see, what do we got? I'm gonna go ahead and paint this little circle. So notice I'm not pressing down. Um, I'm gonna turn my brush a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm barely touching the canvas. No pressure, no weight goes down on the brush. Okay, barely touching. It's better to barely graze the canvas than it is to try to force the color out of your brush. The paint should flow out. Okay, so the trivia question is, how many taste buds do we have? Is it 600 or the tongue? <laughs> How many taste buds does the tongue have? 600, 2,000, 9,000, or 12,000? Answer in the chat. What do we got? Courtney said D, that's 12,000. Nikita said D, Amy said C. What do we got? Anybody else? Angela said D. And Melinda said C. And the survey said the answer is C. 9,000 taste buds on your tongue. That's got to be so frustrating. I've got uh, my middle son. He can't taste. That has to be like super awful not to be able to taste. He had some. Uh, thing done at the doctor where they fixed it for a minute, didn't they, Dan? And then now he's back to not being able to taste it or smell. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> okay, now I just made a boo-boo. I want to show you how to correct, correct a boo-boo. So if you look at my um, pink circle right here, it's a little lopsided. So what I did was I took my number 14 brush and I rinsed it off completely. Then I use my paper towel and let it drink the excess water out of my brush and just lay it down so it forms a chisel. Okay, then I go to the edge where I messed up and I just erase it. And then I wipe off the excess paint and I erase it again. And that's how I correct my mistake. So in case you're wondering, yes, you can erase paint. Just make sure your brush is uh, almost dry and you should be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go over to my next little bubble. I don't know why I put bubbles in this painting. I just got no, 
especially in the winter time, it's Christmas time when I painted this, or the holiday season, I should say. And yes, this will take two coats. So once you mix the pink that you want, uh, when we move on to the next color, you might want to just sprinkle a little water on top of it so it doesn't dry up while you're using another color. Okay, so and what I do is I just take my fingers in the water and then I kind of just drip some drops on top. That way it doesn't dry out. Okay, let's see. We got another question. What is the fastest snake in the world? Is it the black mamba, the king cobra, the boom slang, or the taipan? What is the, what is the fastest snake in the world? Fastest. Oof. I'd hate to be having to run from a snake. Like, do they chase people <laughs> or chase their prey? Oh, they did? Oh, the black mamba. You guys know your snakes? There's some people who know their snakes and some people who they just totally don't have a clue. Wow, that's amazing. Huh, okay. Good job. All right, so if you're painting the little bubbles and you find yourself not being able to stay in the lines, that means that you've lost your point. How do you get your point back on your brush, right? You wanna go back over to your color. You wanna just lay it down and turn it between your thumb and forefinger and get that point back. You gotta have that point in order to um, accomplish what you're trying to do. So if you find you can't fit in these little circles, it just means you need to get your point back. And you're just using the tip, the very tip of your brush, not pressing hard at all. You're just barely grazing the canvas. So I'm gonna go down to this other one. Get this color going. Okay. Then I have this one right here. Same thing, I'm just using the tip of my brush. And again, if you feel like you made a mistake, you can use your number 14 brush as an eraser. And there's a little, little one down here. And just follow around. And what is the technical term for the brain of your computer? Is it the hard drive? the RAM, the CPU, or the motherboard? Well, somebody answered pretty quick. That was Courtney. Nikita said DA. We got, uh, yeah, Jennifer A. Hard drive, that's the brain. A, 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 lots of A's. 1D. And Amy said C. And the survey said the answer is CPU. C, CPU. Good job. Okay, so I'm tapping out that excess water. How's everybody doing? The Guthrie gang, what's cooking? I'm doing good. How, how is the Guth Guthrie gang doing? I don't even see you guys. There she, there you are. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, you're doing it? Good. <laughs> and there they are. There they are. <laughs> hey, we got some, um, we got some associates online too. These are um, Cheryl Mothers who have graduated out of our chapter. We got Val Knighton, I see Francis Woodard, and Sharon Sharon, AKA, 
Awesome. Woo! Awesome. So do we have, let's see, how many do we have? We have 26. So our people are coming in later. Well, you have four others. Oh, and then we have what? They said six, right? So 24, so that's 30. All right. Well, good job. Good turnout. So it is. <laughs> I don't know about this. I need to do hot pink. I just, your, your, pink is fine. <laughs> your pink is your own personal pink. So it can be super intense or it could be really pastel -y. It's up to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the pastel pink here. Yeah, pastel is cool. You're just going to need more than one coat. That's all. Which is the case for all the pinks. So it's okay. All right, so the next thing we get to do is to get our flesh color going, okay? Don't worry if you're still working on your pink, because that's fine. There's a question, okay, which prior company did the founders of YouTube work for? Was it Citibank, Credit Acceptance, PayPal, or U.S. Bank? Yes, Nikita, we're about to do another color. Okay, somebody said PayPal. Oh. And Citibank. All right. That's some good guesses there. And the answer is PayPal. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Courtney, you want to jump in there with one of your prizes? Or are you good? I got one. We'll, we'll pick. We'll we'll look. We'll, we'll be looking at another uh, stumper type question for you, and when we get it, we'll let you know. Okay, so the next color is the brown. Okay, so we're gonna take some of the brown and put it off to the side, and you're gonna pick up some yellow. So I want you to rinse off your palette knife. Wipe it on your paper towel, pick up some yellow, and put that down on your canvas. I mean, on your, your palette, I'm sorry. We're also going to take some white. So the colors again. Notice the ratios. Take a look at the screen for a second. So we got brown, we got white, and we got yellow, and they're all separate. Okay? Good. Okay, so we're going to start with the white. And I'm going to add just a smidgen of yellow to that. A smidgen. smidgen. Oops, I forgot a color, sorry. I'm going to add another smidgen, smidgen of red, which I could have just taken from over there, but I didn't. So I'm going to put this over to the side. So well, there's a reason for this. So this is like the blood in your skin, right? Everybody has blood. <laughs> so that's why we put a little blood in the, uh, in, in the white. Just a little bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, okay? Mostly white. We're making like a little pink there. Then we're gonna add this much yellow. So very small amounts. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just keep blending it. Okay. It what should be like, yeah, you know, like a peachy color when you're done. Like what, yellow and then white? Oops, yeah. She said start with white and then put a little bit of red. Right. White is the color we start with. We're taking like a dot, like this much red, okay, to put into that white. We had about an eighth of a teaspoon of white. Then we added a tiny bit of yellow, like this much, to the white, so you don't overpower it. You should get a color that's very close to peach. Okay, it's actually like a basic flesh color. This is your basic flesh color. So if you want to make, uh, if you want to make my skin a little lighter, <laughs> you can just go in with this. Um, but it might look a little weird. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some brown now. So I bet y'all thought we were going to start with the brown. That's not how it works. We add a little bit of the brown to the peach. And we start building that color. Okay, so I'm going to take some more because I want it to be a little darker. Okay. 
what was it, white and yellow? Okay, I'm going to do it again for those in the peanut gallery. Everybody watch. Everybody watch because I'm going to do it again. All right. So I'm wiping off my palette knife because when you're done painting today, maybe the kids want to paint. And they want to use these colors. So you don't want to pollute them all. So keep your palette knife clean. Right. So let's start again with some white. Right. Okay, so that's, I don't know what that is. That's like a, a quarter teaspoon or something like that. Okay, so we're going to take just a tiny bit of red. So notice the ratio. That's a lot of white. And I'm taking just this, this red that's sitting on my tray. I mean, it's barely, it's like a dash of red. All right, we'll just, just lay that down. Now let's take a dash, a little bit more of a dash of yellow. So like almost twice as much yellow and blend those three colors together. This is giving you your foundational um, flesh tone. And just keep blending, it'll be fine. If it looks too pink, then we know we need to add a little more yellow. So yes, these are colors that we actually have in our, in our skin tones. And so now this is looking more like a peach, like a basic, um, you know, Anglo skin tone, kind of, or Caribbean, I don't know, a basic skin tone, a <laughs> light skin tone, a fair complexion, let's put it that way, all right, so we're going to keep mixing that together, and now to add a little bit of brown, so now I'm adding some brown, because I want Okay, you weren't talking to me. Was someone having a question there? Or? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, so that's good. So look, this is a nice skin tone, right? So, but I want to make it a little darker, so I'm going to go back and pick up some more brown and add to that. And I might even want to add a little more yellow. I want some more life. So now I've got what looks like, I don't know, like a chocolate milkshake color, right? So I'm going to take half of this chocolate milkshake color, pull it off to the side. And I'm going to put a little more brown to that to make it a little darker because that's going to be my contrasting tone. So we have the high tones and then we have low tones. I'm going to take some more brown and make this a little bit darker. So we should have two different skin tones. So the instructions were you split your flesh tone in half, the one that your the basis of your skin tone, and then you can build a second skin tone by adding more brown to that uh, starting tone. So now I have two tones. And actually, I'm going to add a little bit more here and a little bit more here. I'm going to start with a little darker color. Yeah, skin tones are fun to mix, but at least you're learning how to do it here. Some people never learn how to mix skin tones. And actually, I think I'll add just a little more yellow to this one. All right. So with two colors, one is like a milk chocolate and one is like a milkshake. So let's start with that milkshake color. Um, you can use your number 12 brush for this. So just go in your lighter color. And it's going to take us two coats, so we're going to start there. And let's start like on the cheek. And because this is the face, you want to make sure that you're kind of precise, right? So remember your instructions from um, filling in the circle, the smaller circles, is we just want to use the very tip of the brush so we can follow that uh, line of the face. Can you zoom in a little bit, Danny? So you just want to follow that line of the face, just using the tip of your brush. 
And now when you get, you know, away from the edge, you can push down a little harder and use some of that paint in your brush. And then go ahead and uh, dip in a little water and pick up some more of that, uh, the lighter skin tone. Again, I'm getting right against the cheek, so I'm just using the very tip of my brush and I'm not pressing down hard at all. I'm barely touching the canvas just so I can stay within those lines. It's like you're scraping your brush across the lines, across the top. And if you do it like that, you should have um, success and it'll help you stay inside the lines. And then just follow that around. And take a little water if it seems like your paint is sticking, you know, on the areas. Let me move up a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And just try not to put too much water so it gets drippy, but just enough so it spreads. So that's a pretty cool tone there. And so the way we make her a little darker is by adding the shadows. A little bit later, what we'll do. I'm not going to break your con concentration with a trivia question at this point. I want you to focus on making those lines accurate around the face so it looks relatively accurate. And then if you find there's places where you can still see the blue, just kind of push your brush into those little spaces. Keep going around till you get to the neck area. Again, you can press down a little harder when you're not trying to keep a straight edge. And add more water if it feels like your paste or your uh, paint is like glue. It should be more like ink. And actually, you can go up a little bit in this area if you want. Because that's just going to be where we do our hairline. So the hairline is going to be um, your biggest challenge, and I'll tell you why. Because you need to master the light stroke of your number 12 brush. You need to master that. We're going to practice it so that you can get it right. So if you have a spare piece of paper or you want to use the reverse side of your tray, we're going to do that. Um, We're going to do that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to give this an extra, we'll give it a little minute to dry. And actually, you know what, I can go ahead and get my black out. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to sprinkle some water. I'm dipping into my can of water, and I'm just dripping some water on top of um, my flesh color, and I'm dripping a little water on top of my pink so it doesn't dry out. Just a little bit, just kind of spray it out there. Because uh, you don't want to have to mix that color again if you have enough already. All right, let's do a trivia question. Oh, you have it? Oh, hold on. <laughs> Danny's asking me questions in the background. Hey, Courtney, so whenever you're ready, we have your trivia question. You just let me know. I am ready, Cheryl. Go ahead. Are you? Oh, okay. Cool. All right. So the question is, which university did Michelle Obama attend? Was it Harvard, Princeton? Um, I can't see the other answers. Uh, Yale or NYU? B, B. Okay. B, B, B. <laughs> uh, the answer is B, Princeton. Right, I told Dan on. this Let is going to be a matter of the person with the quickest finger. 
I see. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hold on. Kim Henderson with a B. Yeah. Yeah, Kim Henderson with a B. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations, Kim. <laughs> hey, where is everybody from? Like what uh, town in uh, the Chicago area? Uh, Nikita, where are you from? Bolingbrook. Bolingbrook, okay. My neighbor. Courtney, you're? I'm from, I, I'm not in Aurora. Oh, right, right, Aurora. <laughs> I was like, that's a million miles away. <laughs> So, Kim, pick either one, two, or four. Um, one. One. I don't know what's in it, Kim, but I'm putting your name on it. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up some black. Why don't we get to pick up another color? And then we're going to go back and then we'll um, hit that pink again so that you got a nice color. Now, this is going to surprise you what we do. Or actually, yeah, we're going to do this. Hold on. Where is my other palette? Okay, I'm going to switch my palettes out. And believe it or not, we're going to start with some white first this much. So take a look and see how much white we're mixing colors. So you want to take a look. So I'm going to put some white down. I am actually going to go back to my darker color and I'm going to, uh, my brown. Okay, so the colors are, again, I put down a little white. I'm going back to my darker brown for the flesh tone and I'm picking that up. And I'm laying that down next to uh, the white, and then I'm picking up some black. So just a small amount, laying that down. Okay, so we're going to take the white and we're going to add some, and we got the brown there. So we're just going to add a little, like uh, about that much black to the white and brown. And we're going to mix those two things together. So we got like a steely kind of gray. And then the brown kind of tones it down just a little bit, all right? And we're using this as a background color. Now you might be wondering why would she be putting, um, why would she be putting gray down? Because it's a foundational color, so it's going to help us define curls and stuff like that. So we're going to take our number 14 brush and dip it in the water, take off the excess. Okay, now we're going to paint this, the hair area, but we're going to stay in the center of the hair. We're not going near the hairline yet because that's a whole delicate operation. <laughs> you know how it is getting those edges right, right? So it's a delicate operation. So we tapped into our water, we got the paintbrush wet, we're creating like a chisel kind of thing on both sides or loading paint on both sides of the brush. And now we're just going to go in and we're kind of staying within the lines here. Let's just start at the forehead. I'm sorry, at the, the crown. And just barely touching. Here it's okay. We're going to stay away from the hairline here though. Here we're going to kind of stay away from the hairline. Question. Yes. How dark that black needs to be that the color that you're putting on the hairline? This is more of a steel gray. It's more of a steel gray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You say so. <laughs> Who's Carl's iPad? Okay, so do you need help mixing that again? So it should be, it's not directly black, it's gray. Oh. 
Did I right? Look like... It's not black. Yeah, so it looks like a gray if I have to look at it. Okay. Yeah. So here's here's your gray. Yeah. Here's black. So can you kind of see the difference there? Yeah. Okay, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and then we're just kind of going around like this. And, and then we'll go back and put those curly cues in last. Those are the last things we do. We'll just follow this around. And then all the way around. I know you might think it's really odd that we're using gray, but there's a reason. There's a reason. And around the top, same thing. And again, if you're having any trouble with spreading the paint, just one little dip in the water will do it for you. Okay, for this question. Before he was a member of the Nation of, Is of Islam, Malcolm X was called Young Slim, Slim, Red, or Detroit Red. Malcolm X was called Slim, Red, uh, Detroit Red, or what was the other one? Uh, Young Slim. Did you get answers? Oh, okay. Quite a few. Wow, very. Oh, Detroit Red, okay. Nice. Okay, so I got my, my hair kind of blocked in. All right, so here we go now. Uh, let's see, we need our number 12. And you need that piece of paper or the reverse side of your image. Let's use the reverse side of your, your image that came in your kit or just a plain piece of paper. Or turn your canvas over if you can do it without smudging your image. So I'm gonna go over these strokes with you because they're important for the hairline if you want to have a natural looking hairline. All right, so I'm putting out some black now and actually maybe we should go lighter first. So that way it won't be so terrifying for you. Let's do that. <laughs> Cheryl, can, can we pause? Is everybody done with hair? I'm, I'm just kind of not done with hair. I don't know about everybody else. No, I'm not done with hair either. I'm remedial. I'm not either. <laughs> No worries. No worries. I got you. I'll wait for you. That's fine. I'm going to get me some more wine. You'll just be, you know, drunk painting over here. <laughs> that works. <laughs> okay. So uh, the next question is, Jerome from Martin is a player from Detroit, Harlem, Chicago, or the Himalayas? Jerome. From Martin is a player from Detroit, Harlem, Chicago, or the Himalayas. We got a B, we got an A. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Let's pay me more drinking, Cheryl. Just kidding. All right. And I'm still waiting, no worries. Actually, I'm going to change my water while you're doing that. I highly recommend changing your water because you don't want to try to get a light color and then your water's the color of mud. So you want to tip away and, and get some fresh water. We'll wait for you. Let me see what everybody's doing. I'd, like, I'd love to see how the progress is going. Just, oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cute. 
That makes me so proud. Good job. Good job. Oh, Jafaria, go ahead and go to the edge of that with the gray. I, I said that before because I thought I was going to go in with brown, but I want you guys to, um, we're going to go in with a lighter color instead of black. That way it won't be so scary for you making these lines. Okay. My, my girl is definitely wearing fashion fair makeup. Oh, let me see. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, red underneath. <laughs> there, let me see you. <laughs> Here's Nikita. Yeah, it's definitely a fashion fair. This is not Fenty. I know that's right. Or, um, <laughs> yeah, this is not a. Oh, okay. Okay. I see Jennifer. See, she gave her a lighter skin tone. Okay, good for well, you. you no, know, I got to keep it real. Okay. <laughs> good catch up, Jen. I know what I did. I had to skip the bubbles to catch up. I got on 30 minutes late. So I'm just That's kind of okay. And guess what, Jennifer? There's going to be a recording so you can access it later. Um, and Jennifer, we're going to have to go back and retrace them, add some more bubbles. So you'll be okay. <laughs> okay good. Just eyeball it and just. Yeah, yeah, we're about to get those edges pretty soon. So I realized, y'all, I'm painting Erica. She, she she stepped in. I told her I was making a painting. Oh, I'm making Pam. Perfect. Oh, that. you are. <laughs> I That's know. what's cool about this painting is though, even though it, you know, it modeled it after myself, so many people have looked at it and go, oh my God, that can hang in my house. That looks just like me. Yeah, it's great. It's adaptable because it doesn't show the full on face. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. It's my lighter hue. Danny wants to know if Jennifer's ever been mistaken for Mariah Carey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> she does sing. No, me. I'll me take it. Day. No, it's either in that Lazy Susan or it's uh, the grill outside Hi. in the park. You say you're welcome. Oh All right, God. I'm oh sitting here God. chilling, waiting for everybody. I'm taking another sip. Cheers. Wait, Jafari, yeah, she went and got her another drink. All right. I want to get clean water. <laughs> oh, clean water. Sure. Yeah. Likely to I think it's already here. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, I got another question. Yes. Um, on the hairline near the end, did you fill it all in or you just left the gap? Can I see your picture? Just a second. I went all the way to the end. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I started off with uh, one technique and then I had to adapt it because I know this is going to be a challenge for you. So I wanted to stop and, and practice the stroke with you, which we'll do in just a minute. So what I want to know is Stephanie here. So is it Stephanie Washington? Steph, she's the one who came on Saturday morning to do a pickup. Stephanie? Uh-huh. I don't know. I guess I don't know. Stephanie. Yeah, Stephanie did the pickup. Stephanie Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did it for someone else too, I think. There was Yes, Queen Picasso Stephanie is here with Leslie Williams. Oh. Leslie, <laughs> Leslie, Leslie, Leslie. Leslie. We're, we're, we're part of the Guthrie group. Oh, we're the here Guthrie with group. Okay, I got you. <laughs> and Courtney, if you're confused, Stephanie reached out to me Hi. on Thursday as a surprise visitor in town. Yes. <laughs> so we're here. Awesome. Rocking it. That's a lot. Okay. Stephanie, what you drinking? Oh, they're quiet. Oh, here she mm -hmm. comes. You know, we got Cooper's Hot. We got some of everything up in here. <laughs> you got to stop drinking because we're getting behind. So we're, <laughs> we're just loving it. What are you guys drinking? I am doing Cooper's Hawk too. Oh, 
Awesome. Okay, so there's my painting. I'm going to bring back where I was a minute ago. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, whip out our number uh, 12 brush. I'm going to get some new paper towels that look a little messy there. Yes, do change your paper towels. Don't let them turn into a mushy mess. You need a nice clean towel to, you know, soak the wa excess water out of your brush. We're going for that number 12. This is super important, super important if you want to have a successful hairline. So here's my number 12. I've just taken it out of the water. It's dripping with water. See this? It's still dripping. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to soak, let the paper towel drink out the excess water just by rolling it between my thumb and forefinger. So that gives me a nice point. Can you see how sharp that is? It's sharp. Okay, so I can make like a super, 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 super skinny line with this, all right? So what we want to do is to make sure um, over here on the palette side that we have enough water, enough liquidity in our color. Yes, Taylor. In our color so that when we blend it, it's very fluid. Okay, so we're actually going to start with brown. Hey, why don't you get, you know, why don't you get your white gym shoes right here on the steps? Because that way you don't have to tie them. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put down some brown. We're going to start with brown instead of black, all right? But it's going to be a very dark black. It's going to be like a brownish black. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up like about half of that, mix it into the brown. Okay, so it's not exactly, you know, midnight black. It's kind of a chalky brown, right? I'm going to pick up, I'm going to use my palette knife, and I'm just going to drip some water into that just a little bit so that I get a nice inky consistency. Okay, it should not be like paste or toothpaste or anything like that. It should be like an ink, okay? So now that I've done that, I'm going to take that brush that I've turned and it's got a nice point. I hope you're watching this. Take a minute and watch this. Wait, how dark are we making this? Should be like, it's like, uh, it's a brownish gray. Um, it's not pitch black. This is pitch black right here. This is the brownish gray. It's like 50-50 black. Or, I'm sorry. It's 50-50 uh, black and brown. So let me look at this closely. What is that color? I don't know. Mud. <laughs> the color is mud is what we're going for, right? So we're going to take the tip of that brush that we just uh, made into a point, and now we have like a quill. So you see it's just the paint is just on the tip of the brush. There's no paint in the brush, around the brush, just on the tip, right? And then there's even, I'm going to just wipe off a little excess of that, right? I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to barely touch the canvas. This is another one of those operations where you're barely touching the canvas and you just move it in a line. Okay. So there's your, there's your edge. Can you zoom in Danny, please? Okay. So, and we're not doing this fast, we're doing it slow. See that? This is the way you make straight skinny lines. Okay, this is the hairline. But the only way you can accomplish this is if your brush is at a point. Okay. I'm going to go back again and pick up a little more. And I'm using just the tip of the brush. This is what happens when I press too hard. I get a fat line. You don't want that. You don't want this or that. You want to barely be touching the canvas and just kind of glaze that brush over the canvas like that. 
okay? That's gonna help you get this line that resembles hair, okay? All right, let's give it a shot. All right, so we're gonna start, we're gonna start here at the, uh, what do you call that? I don't know, wherever that hair, you know, the thing, on, <laughs> what do you call that? I don't know what you call that, but right here is where we're starting. Sideburn. Sideburn, Sideburn that's what that's called. Okay, what was that? No more wine? <laughs> All right, now, same stroke I just practiced, right? So watch. So I'm going up because in our image, that's how the hair is going up, right? So rest your hand on the side of the canvas like this. Hold your brush at an angle. Lay the brush down, barely touching the canvas, and just drag. And if nothing comes out like that, that means you need a little more water. But if you just drag like this, you should be fine, barely touching the canvas. Don't press down. You're not trying to get uh, paint out of the brush. If it's not coming out by you just um, touching the edge of the, the bristle, these last two hairs, then you, you don't have a, uh, enough liquidity, enough water in your paint. So you need to wet your brush, twirl out the excess water, and then pick up just with the tip. Notice how my brush is not full of paint. It's only at the tip, right? So let's put this to canvas. Oh, one question first, and then we're gonna dig in, all right? <laughs> in which city did Rosa Parks refuse to move to the back of the bus? Was it Tuskegee, Montgomery, Birmingham, or Jackson? All right. Are we, are we getting answers or two so, two so far? B, B, Montgomery. B. B, Courtney. B. And the answer is Montgomery. Okay, so we're getting ready to go in. So imagine this is your hair and you're brushing these edges up, right? You want this to lay right. So let's, we're gonna start right here at the nape of the ear. And we're going to lay our first stroke real nice and easy, very lightly. And not too far away from that line. And then just kind of follow it. Like, I don't know how best to describe that, but just Realize that the hair is going up in an updo and make the lines accordingly. Now, the other thing that will help is that now we'll go in and just kind of blur that little line in between. And then keep making those lines, the upswept lines. And so now I'm going to get closer to this edge and just barely touch the canvas. If you barely touch it, you have a better chance of doing it correctly. And if you make a mistake, it's always easier to go over it again than erase. Although it is totally possible to erase. And we're going up, up, up. Oops. Now maybe I'll come out a little further here. I'm going back and dipping in and making sure my brush is nice and wet. And just try to break that hard line that we have from our previous. So just go where that, where that hard line is that we created, just try to blur it. Don't go to the edge here, start right where you see that line from the previous uh, drawing, just kind of 
blur it out. So you see how I'm staying behind the line, not extending my brush past that initial line. Yeah, I can hear you guys concentrate. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's like that one thing that kind of gives you the level of realism. So you want to make sure you can get, do it right. But yeah, just even if you barely touch the canvas, it's better than you pressing down too hard. Okay, then when we get under the ear, so we're behind the ear now. We're behind the ear. So don't worry about it. these are the most important lines, but we can actually go back in and, and fix any mistakes you made. So if you look at the original, you look at the original, you'll see there's almost some flesh colored hair going up into the hair do. That's me going in and going, oh, this line is too fat. I don't like that. I'm taking my flesh color and I'm pushing it into the hair. And that's what's helping me give a more realistic appearance. Okay, so now we're, we're not right here. We're about right here. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush. And I'm repeating the same process, except now maybe my lines are a little shorter. And I'm, why don't I make a guideline? So I'm going up that way, right? So we'll keep following that. Very light all the way around. And you can vary this a little bit. Nobody's hairline is exactly straight. We'll let them concentrate out of this and then we'll move into another trivia question. Very light, very light strokes. And just imagine it's moving up towards the top. And this is helping us with the highlights and everything, but we can put more highlights in later. And then same thing around the bottom. Just very light. Okay, so here, let's take a break from our, from our hairlines there. I'm gonna go around and just push these up. Watch how I'm just swooping this all up like it was actually hair. And I thought I'd take a break because the next thing we're gonna do is using that same technique. Oh, okay, so trivia question. He's a complicated man and no one understands him, but his woman, is he? Kanye West, Ray Rice, John Schaff, or Chris Brown. He's a complicated man and no one understands him but his woman, Kanye West, Ray Rice, John Schaff, or Chris Brown. Oh, a lot of Kanye's. <laughs> Is that a song? <laughs> uh, the answer is Shaq. He's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I think I guessed. <laughs> okay, now the fun part. All right, so now that you've mastered the thin stroke, we're about to make her look like she actually has curly hair, right? So let's start like right here so you can make some mistakes first. And if you don't want to make your first mistake on the canvas, let's do this. Just take your brush and try some lines. Try some squiggly lines. Try just with the tip. So we're going for this, okay? Real light, just circles. 
like that. That's what we're going for, right? Are we using the same color pattern of dark brown? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so just like this. Because we're going to go back in with black. So when we do black, it's really going to pop. There's layers, always layers to acrylic paint. All right, so um, we're gonna start right here and let's just do some of these. Don't worry about this line right here. This line in between that we can see that we painted it before. So just go ahead and make some willy nilly lines. Just willy nilly. Can you zoom in for us so we can see it a little more closely? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to blur this line. So I don't want it to look like, you know, there was a cap and then there's crazy curls coming out. So I'm going to blur this line by just pushing my paintbrush over that line. So you can't see where it starts and the curly hair begins. Okay. So I'm just blurring that all the way around. So I'm pushing this hard line out of existence. That's my goal. So that's what I'm doing here. Just pushing that out, you can't see it anymore. And now I'm going to hit this line around the hair, I'm sorry, around the forehead. And I'm just making some squiggly curls. And like that. And then kind of pushing that line away. So you can't tell that we made that little cap. Now we're just willy nilly with the little lines here to imply curl, curly bangs. And guess what? We get to do that all the way around. But from here up, from here up. So I'm going to put one out here. And I'm coming out here. OK. So it doesn't have to be too exact. You know, it just has to represent some curls. Could be kinky curls, could be loose curls, could be whatever kind of curls you want. As long as you use the tip of your brush and you understand that using the tip of your brush allows you to make different kinds of curls. You're going to have the S curl. This is how my hair is. It's like that. Um, and then you can have coils, which is more like that. And of course you have what they call it, 3C, where it's like this. Uh, but it's all with your brush. You just kind of, you know, move it here and there. Okay, so, but the most important part, so it doesn't look like, you know, this circle is there, is that we push out that line. We make sure we're not going outside of it, but we're just kind of touching the brush there so it's no longer a defining line. Okay, so yeah, just some willy nilly kind of coils. And actually my hair is really not just one way, it's like several ways, or <laughs> it's like 4C, 4A, <laughs> a little bit of everything. And when I put henna in it, henna like totally freaks my curls out like it relaxes them over continued use like natural uh, source henna will relax your curls in your hair. All right. All right. Can we do another trivia question, Mr. Danny? How are we doing over there? All right. So now that we have to see if you can see this gray on the background helps us when we go to make um, curls because it kind of acts like, a, you know, the highlights. So now we're just kind of willy nilly twirling that brush around. Super willy nilly. And then right in here and let's pick up the ref reference image. So, okay, so it's a little darker there. Well, that's okay. So we're going to continue with our 
curls on the top. So it looks like we did all this work to get these curls, but actually all we did was, you know, make the edges curly. And then we just kind of made some willy nilly shapes in uh, the center. So the gray kind of makes the colors pop out, or the curls, I should say. Okay. Oh, question. Okay, so the question is, which character from Martin lived on the fifth floor? Was it Roscoe, Hustleman, Dragonfly Jones, or Bra Man? Which one was it? Who was Martin's upstairs neighbor? So D D D D D D D D D D D They coming through. D D D D. Yes, it's bro. It was bro man? He used to come through the window, right? <laughs> oh my god, I love that character. Okay. Um. Okay, so, all right, so now I need to go put some, if I don't like my hairline, I'm going to go back with uh, my brown and go and fix some things, but um, I need to get over here in the kitchen and finish that off. So I'm going to go back to my gray, or my, uh, what is that, my mud color. Going back to my mud color, and again, I got my you know, just the tip of my brush and I'm making sure it's not too wet. So I'm letting the paper towel drink the excess water out of my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the nape of the neck. Very light stroke. Cheryl, I'm having a hard time seeing what you're doing is your um, if you're, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just moved the sheet up a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. You're welcome. Okay, so now I'm going to grab each one of these where I, I landed um, the ends of my um, hairline, and I'm just kind of doing some willy nilly curls kind of right here, just with the tip of the brush. I'm like, Continuing where this one left off, and I'm just kind of really light. That's the whole trick, is just keep your brush really light. Try not to touch it very hard or very heavily. And actually, I could bring them down, make them fly out. Be some stray strands here and there. Here's much as we like it to be perfect, it never is. Yeah. Okay, so here, I'm gonna kind of refine this. Oh wait, I might as well go ahead and stick this eyebrow, oh, this eyelash here before I forget. Actually, there's kind of a little bit of a eyebrow there. Just like the very tip, <laughs> not very much. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, because I have such long and glamorous air eyelashes. Seems like the older I get, the more my eyelashes disappear. It's so frustrating. Okay, so lightly go along that hairline. So I'm going back again because I kind of didn't like, but that's up to you. So you notice the finer your lines are, the more realistic it looks. So if your lines are looking a little heavy, then you can fix it. Just because it's not right right now, maybe it just needs a little more work. Real light. Same thing here. Can you, can you show how you got the curls in the big poof at the top? I, I didn't see that part. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go back over to my, this is, did I use black? Uh, I didn't. I used the brown. I used the mud color that we created, but you could use black too. Someone asked earlier if we were using black or the other color, we're using mud. Okay. But that's okay because we're going to go back and we're going to add some more highlights. So here's how it goes. 
So you go to the edge. And again, the most important part is just that you don't put a lot of pressure on your brush. You can't, cannot lay into your brush like this because it'll look like that. <laughs> so just go in and rotate your brush till you get your point back. Lay your brush down over the canvas and barely touch the canvas to get your curls like that. And the reason why you can't see that line, remember that line that was like the cap? You know, it was like all this hardness. We just take the end of our paintbrush and we push it out. Just push it out. We don't want it to seem like there was a line there before. So all we have to do is push it out and it's gone. Okay, the only way, only, only where, the only place we want to see like a line is like at the, where the hair is pulled up, right? And we don't definitely don't want to see that down here either. So what I'll probably do, here's a trick. Here's what I'll do for here, because this is kind of important. I'm going to take my number 12, I'm twirling it to a point, and I'm going to go into my flesh color. Remember we threw some water on here? so that um, it would stay moist because we're going to use it again, right? So watch how I fix this. Are we zoomed in on this day? Oh, okay. I can't uh, see what I'm doing. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to take some of this uh, lighter color that we use for our foundation, <laughs> our fashion fair, right? We're going to take some fashion fair, put it down at the nape of the neck. Again, same principle very light stroke. We want to make really um, light lines. So we're going to start on this side of the skin. Can you see this? Okay, we're going to start on this side of the skin. And we're going to take a light stroke and just do that. Okay, just barely touch the canvas. So now it looks like here, make sure it's got to be nice and thick. But also fluid at the same time. So now this is helping us create a more realistic hairline because we're creating like, oh, I guess uh, a hairline for lack of a better term. So just use the very tip of the brush. And break up that, that hard line at the bottom. Okay, and if you're not feeling that and you want to correct it, then you just get back in there, rinse out that brush, twirl it back into a point, go back over to your um, darker color, and then thin that previous line out. So yeah, it kind of takes some work to get that hairline right, but it's doable. You get more of a sense of realism. All right, and let's get one going crazy right there. Okay, so which historically black sorority was founded first? Was it Delta Sigma Theta, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sigma Gamma Rho, or Zeta Phi Beta? Did we have an answer already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're just like, <laughs> all of the AKAs are like, B, 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 B. And alpha, well, we got Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it was Alpha Kappa Alpha. Nice. Good job. OK, so wait, let's go in real quick. Wait, I should put like a little curl over here somewhere. We could just curl this up a little bit. No, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to mess it up. I always got to know when to stop. <laughs> I am not messing with it. I am just going to leave that alone. 
So, okay, here we go. Now let's put some highlights before we go in and put the ear in because we got to give her an ear before all is said and done, right? Uh, and how we're going to do that uh, with the highlights. We got to go right in here and do some highlights. So we're not going to do exactly 100% white, but I'm going to show you how to do this so that it, um, if you make a mistake, it's easy to correct. So we're going to pick up a little of the white and let's pick up some of that gray we we're using or mud and mix that in. Oops, not nah, put too much. It should be like kind of silvery, kind of high silver. <laughs> no, that's what Lone Ranger said. Hi, old silver, you're showing your age. <laughs> you guys know who the Lone Ranger is? No, they don't know. Okay, so which country consumes the most chocolate per capita? Is it Peru, Spain, Switzerland, or Guatemala? Any guesses? Yeah? Okay, so I am putting, uh, all of them said C, Switzerland. Well, let's see the answer. The same. Ding, 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 ding. It's Switzerland. And Val raised her hand. Val, what's up? What you need, girl? I can't hear you. I'm going to unmute you. Hold on. Um, I had to step away for a second. So um, the white part of the hair, how did you do that? I haven't done it yet. Haven't oh, done it yet. Let okay. me show you. And like I said, we're recording this, so you won't miss anything. Um, here we go. So I'm just, I took some white and I added a little of our previous mud color to it. So we got this like silver gray. That's what we're making jokes about. The Lone Ranger, high O silver. <laughs> so we're, we're uh, twirling that brush to get our point back. That's the most important part. Got to have your point. So we're going to take from this side and move forward. Our lines are in a circle in line with the shape of the head. So we're just gonna start like right here, real light. And we'll make another one. And let's just kind of go a little willy nilly with this. Okay, you can layer this. And what you wanna do, the goal is, like if you start in the center right here, Okay, you zoomed in, Danny? Okay, you start in the center right here. You move your brush out. That'll make the line that you end up on like a pointed line, which is more in line with a shadow. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing that in the shape of the head. Notice the lines are curved. Okay, and they're just kind of in the center. Okay, and then actually what I did was I kind of like, you know, because I got a few gray hairs, so, and I try to put in some waves. But again, you have to use just the tip of your brush and you can't press down hard. If you do, you're going to get fat lines that don't look like hair. So if you find that when you're making these lines, you run out of paint, that means you need more water in your brush and just kind of slowly follow the lines as they relate to the shape of the head. So I put a couple over here and try to show some waves. And so if I want to make those blend in, I'm going to take my number 14 brush. I rinsed it out 100%. And I'm just gonna see if I can blur the ends of those lines a little bit. And we're just kind of pushing those lines around. It's just like, you know how I told you you can use this for an eraser? Kind of what it does. It kind of helps erase that color into the hair. So you can put you some streaks. Yeah. And then just kind of 
use that. Number 14 is a straight edge brush. It helps refine those areas. Can you see that? And then actually I'll go back and put some white on my brush to lighten that gray we created. I'm gonna put some more water as well so that it flows from my brush so I can make thin lines. Can't make thin lines with uh, um, paint. That's the consistency of paint. So I'm gonna twirl this again. And I'm gonna get to get my point back. And now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put these extra highlights. I'm gonna put these extra highlights on top of the gray. See how there's like a, a darker highlight color? Now I'm gonna go back with this, this lighter, this whiter color. So it really pops out. And just make sure you're following the shape of the head and you'll be fine. Now, if you find like you're, you feel like your lines are a little fat and you're a little worried about that, so then just pick up your number 14 brush again. It's the flat one. Dip it in your water. Soak out the excess water so that it's just a damp brush. You want your chisel there. And then just push that color. Well, not like that, <laughs> but just push it, push it all the way through in, in the shape of the hair. Now I made a little boo-boo right there. I can fix it really easily by just picking up some more of my hair color. So everything is fixable in this piece. I can even go in and fine tune my lines if I want. Okay, so Keep working on your hair. I'm just going to show you how to do the ear. All right. So make sure this is dry. Yeah, your skin has to be dry <laughs> before you put your ear on. <laughs> that sounds funny. Your skin must be dry before you add your ear. Question, what does it mean if you if your ear keeps itching, speaking of ears, what does it mean if your ear keeps itching? You have allergies, someone's talking about you, you need to see a doctor, or you're in love. <laughs> Where are we getting, Dan? B. Someone's talking about you. Somebody is in your business. All right. Okay, so we want to line this up again. So you're just going to line up your bubbles. Oh, don't put this, the carbon paper on your wet painting. If anything is wet, you need to whip out your hair dryer. Okay, I'm telling you this. I'm not going to go too fast from this point, but I just want you to know how to put your ear down <laughs> on the canvas. Okay, but don't put the carbon paper on wet canvas. It'll just make a chocolate no, a black mess. So don't do that. Okay, make sure you dry it first. All right, but I'm just going to demo this. So if you want to stop for a second and just look. So that when you, you're ready to move to this point, you, you know what to do. All right, so just line up the face, line up the eyelash, line up everything, then just slide this piece of paper in over on the corner like this. Okay, you guys watching? Mm -hmm. I want you to see this. Okay, so you got everything lined up, lined up all your circles, you know where everything is, all right? Most important is just line up the facial line, okay? If your bubbles are off, which mine apparently are, <laughs> the face is the most important. So just go I, around the ear. I cannot see your ear. Could oh, you, you can't I see it? No. Um, you might want to open your screen because it's actually there. Um, you know, expand your um, 
window. If you can. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So um, uh -huh. just follow this around. And go, just keep following it around. You can do it light. Just make sure the tracing paper is under the area that you're tracing. And don't forget the little earring. And actually, I like to make mine a little bigger so it hangs below the chin a little bit. And then before I pick it up, I always lift up one side and then check and make sure it's there. And it is so I can lift this up now. Okay. <sighs> All right, we got that ear. Now, guess what? You have to use your patience and your number 12 brush to get this ear. Okay, it's not that hard because the fine intricacies of the inner ear, or I should say anyone's inner, inner ear, is like it takes, what we want to do, our goal is just to outline this area and put this shadow in behind the ear so the ear looks realistic. Okay, that's our main objective. The darker color here, around the back of the ear and this little area right here and this darker area here. Okay, the rest of this, the highlighting and stuff, it's a little bit advanced, but if you've mastered how to use and, and keep the fine point on your number 12 brush, you'll be able to put that highlight in, okay? So um, the color we're gonna go to is our dark chocolate over here. And we're gonna pick up some of that mud color and add it to the chocolate, okay? So I'm gonna bring this over here. Going back to my original color of uh, the second color that we created, the darker one, and I'm gonna add some black to it, just a little bit, or our mud color to it. So we're gonna use this as a high, as the uh, shadow to that we're gonna create behind the ear. And I think I might need a little bit more of this color, so I'm gonna add that in and blend it really well. I'm gonna add some more water so it's uh, smooth. Okay, so I think this is dark enough. I hope it's dark enough. If not, I have to go back and add black. So what I'm doing is my point is intact and I'm ready to outline the outside of the ear and the earring. That's where I'm going first, all right? So I'm just taking the very tip of my brush and actually, well, I guess that's dark enough. Should be darker than the flesh on, on the rest of the face. And I'm outlining the back of the earring and the earring itself. But I'm not going into the blue because there would be no shadow on the wall from my earring on this side. Okay, then I'm gonna take my number 14 brush out again. Make sure it's totally clean and dry. I'm pushing out the excess water and I'm just gonna blur this line with the edge of my brush. So it doesn't look so much like a hard line. Do that question. Oh, question. Okay, 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 I'm coming. Which two US states don't observe daylight savings time? Is it Texas and Florida, Maine and Washington, Ohio and Idaho, or? Arizona. Arizona and Hawaii. So I'm just following along the back of that ear. So see how that's a little bit darker? You can zoom in on that if you want, Dan. And then I'm gonna go around the top of the ear as well. Just the tip of my brush, I'm creating the shadow behind the ear. And that's gonna make that ear look real about the realest ear you're ever going to paint. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll get better. You'll practice more and you'll be a master ear painter. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and blur this line a little bit so it's not a hard line. I'm using my number 14 brush. And it's completely clean and dry. And now I'm feeling like I need to go back again. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to dry this brush really well and just try to push that color into the skin. Now I'm going to go inside the ear with our mud color again. And I'm going inside just with the tip of my brush. Because there's no way we can put pressure down in this tiny area and make an accurate mark. So you have to use super light pressure. And just the tip of the brush. To recreate that small line. So we're just painting that dark area. Use your reference image so you know where you're painting that. And now I'm going to go back to uh, my flesh color and just mix the tip of my um, that black that I had, the darker color, the mud color. And I'm going to use that for the rest of the ear because it's less in shadow, so it's going to be less dark than the mark we just made. Okay, so I'm going in here. And just using the very tip of my brush, going around, just follow that line. And I'm going to use this darker color inside here as well, this little small space. And then just follow this, this final line. Oh. So you get to the earring. Oh, and don't forget to give, give the girl a chin. She needs a chin, so. Jaw. A jaw, a jaw, jawline, yeah. So from the earring, if you look at this for a second. So from the earring, right there, it's the middle point, right? There's the top, there's the bottom of the earring. We're going for the middle point. From this point to this point, make a dot. Then make another dot right here. Make another dot on the outside of the pearl. And then connect the dots. I'm gonna say that one more time. So if you're not watching, just take a look. So we're looking at the whole earring. In the center of the earring, make a dot. Make another dot at the tip of the chin. I'm looking at the reference image. I'm making another dot outside of the pearl. And then we're going to connect the dots like this. Just curve. Okay. And then paint that in with your darker um, highlight color. So it's here. And here. And here. So just like that, nice little, that might be too light. So I'm going to pick up some more of that mud color and make that a little lighter, a little darker, I'm sorry. Make sure you blend it in real well. And use the very tips so you stay in the lines. And just be conscious that you're making a jawline. And there, so there's a little, little jawline. Okay, so I'm going to make an earring now using my number 12 again, because that gets in the tiny spaces. So I'm just going to dip into my white directly because I've cleaned my brush completely. And maybe I'll just make it a little more liquid because I don't want to have any trouble uh, spreading that. And I'm just going to 
dab my um, white right there for that little earring. And then I'm going to dab over here for the pearl. And my paint feels a little watery, so I'm going to put a little more paint to that. Okay, so we got another one, another question. Okay, Courtney, you want to make this a trivia question? It is. Yes? What is the most common birthday in the United States? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a good one. Okay. Um, oh, bye, Gabby. She has to go. <laughs> Gabby. Thanks for coming. Okay, so what is the most common birthday in the U.S. for another prize from Courtney? Is it February 14th, July 21st, September 9th, or November 23rd? What is the most popular birthday? I don't see enough answers. Come on, people. <laughs> They're still guessing. Nikita was first, so we have to see who's right on this one. Can you zoom in on the ear for us? Sure. Oh, we have to wait till the question. Right after the question, he'll zoom in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we got A, B, 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 and D. Any more guesses? Okay, Courtney, you're going to cut it off now? Go ahead, turn it off. What's the answer? What's the answer, Danny? The answer is drum roll. September 9th. C. Nobody got it. Nobody got it? <laughs> no. No, we didn't get it. We got another one. Okay, we got another one right after this. Okay, so I put my little earring. Now I'm gonna just use some yellow. Do you have some yellow? I'm just gonna dip my brush in just a tip. Actually, let me mix that with a little white first. So I'm going to put down a little white and I'm going to add a little yellow to that. So it's like uh, two to one. And I'm going to pick up just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of red, tiny bit, because we want it to be more gold than yellow. Come on. Come on. Okay, there we go. That's too much. I'm just going to add a little bit just to give it like a tinge of orange. There we go. There's more gold than yellow. Actually, it feels kind of peachy to me. Let me add a little more yellow. There, that feels more like gold. All right. And then again, we're just using the tip of the brush. Last two hairs on the tip of the brush to get into that tiny, tiny space, super small space that is the earring. And I'm going to go back and um, paint some of my little bubbles again. Do we need another question? Because they didn't answer that one. And that was supposed to be for a prize. Courtney, how many prizes do we have left? I have two more. OK, so we need two questions. They're coming. All right, how fast does the Earth spin? Is it 50 miles per hour? A 500 miles per hour, a thousand miles per hour, or a 5,000 miles per hour. Nikita is always quick on the draw. <laughs> I stopped painting because I'm, I I got to go back and listen for the ear and all of that. So I'm just <laughs> sitting here. <laughs> all right, girl. All right, the answer is 
C, 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, who got it right? Oh, let me see. A few people. Is that Nikita again? Did I see Nikita on C? Yeah. Did you say C, Nikita? <laughs> Nikita's winning everything. Nikita win. <laughs> Congratulations. So I'm going back in and giving another. Oh, and one thing I wanted to show you guys or tell you is um, take a picture of your work. Stop for a minute and take a picture so you can see how you're doing. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. All right, while you're taking a picture, Nikita, pick two or four. Two or four. The next, yeah, let me give her a minute. Okay, so congratulations, Nikita, again. And we got the next question up there already. All right, so a different world. What city was Whitney Gilbert from? Was it Charlotte, Atlanta, Savannah, or Richmond? <laughs> Kim said Atlanta. No, I mean Richmond. <laughs> uh, D, Richmond. D, Savannah. Oh, there's no C. There's no letters there. Hmm? Yes, C. Yes. Awesome. You have to bring the plate. Oh, yeah. Good one. Karen Lee. Okay. Courtney looks like Karen got that one. Woohoo! <laughs> Congratulations. Was, it looking? was that our last one? Was that our last trivia question? That was your last prize. It wasn't your last prize? I you have one more. Um I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't paying attention to do a prize for this one. Why don't we do one more? Okay. So the question is, uh, what me, is the most uh, popular <laughs> instrument in the U.S.? Is it the drums, the piano, the guitar, or the violin? Well, that's good. Everybody answer right away. The answer is B, the piano. Oh, I see Francis. Francis, did you say B? Francis Woodard. Yes. Hey, Francis. How's it going, girl? Okay. All right. <laughs> you are the winner of my last prize. I got your name. Wonderful. Awesome. Congratulations, Francis. Thank you. All right, so um, yeah, if you guys haven't had a chance to take a picture of your work and just to see how you're doing, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you take a snapshot. And also, if you feel like your edges over here are too fat, like it's just like too solid or something like that, the fix for that is just to go back to your flesh color, right? And pick up some color on your brush Jane, can you give me a shot on the canvas here or on the palette? Okay, just go over to your flesh color, get that brush back to a tip, and go in here and thin those lines out. Okay, just using the tip of your brush, you can fix where you feel like, you know, the lines are too fat or something like that, but you've got to use just the tip of the brush to do that. Like you could even vary the hairline a little bit. See that? 
And over here, like I'm feeling like this looks a little um, blotchy instead of, you know, a little more fine the way I'd like it. So I'm gonna take the edge of my brush and just go in. You see that? Okay, I'm picking up that flesh color and I'm going in and I'm thinning out these fat lines I made before. That's how you fix that. So if you haven't nailed it right now, with a little more practice, you'll be able to get this so that it looks like a hairline you can be proud of. Okay. Real light strokes. Because you know, you can see um, a lot more of a hairline, you know, a lot more of the skull when you're looking at someone's hairline than just, you know, the way we have it painted in. So you just add that back in with the flesh color. See? And just follow that all the way around. So that'll give you a more natural look. Where else do we need curls? Do we need more curls anywhere? Nope, I think we got them. I think we got them. And then of course, make sure you sign your work. Make sure that um, everybody can see who created your lovely creation. And I'm gonna go ahead and sign this because I might this on the website. All right, so I'm just using again, this is your like your quill. So very light. Just use the very tip. And 2020. Do we have another uh, trivia for Courtney? Or was that the last one? That was the last one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And there we have it. So you guys don't run off. I'm going to take pictures. And I'll send all the pictures to Courtney. I'll send Courtney the videotape for anyone who wants to paint some more. That's perfect. And, pardon me? That would be perfect. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you put the little caps back on your paint so that if the kitties want to use your paints when you're done, they can, you know, have them and they won't be dried out. Make sure that you rinse your brushes out. Okay, don't leave your brushes sitting in the water. Tap off the excess water. Let the water or let the paper towel soak out, drink out the excess water from your brush, twirl it between your thumb and forefinger for the number 12 brush and just lay it there. And then for the number 14, yeah, you wanna shake it around in that water, get that excess paint out, tap off the excess water, and then let the uh, paper towel drink out the excess water so it returns back to its original shape. And you can use these brushes for at least another six months to a year. So, I mean, if you paint every day. If you don't paint every day, that'll last you for years. So, <laughs> so um, let's see, what else? What else? What else can I tell you? Um, yeah, I want to ask you guys if you um, want to hold up your paintings. We can. Yeah, so you ladies who I can't see your faces are going to have to open up your camera. Yeah, just for a minute. <laughs> Because we got, how many people we got online right now? Let's see, we were at 26, oh, we're at 23 now because we had to have some people leave. Um, but yeah, we should, oh, okay, Mia has some Black Lives Matter, yeah. And you know what, when you hold up your painting, it's not going to show, Mia. You'll have to either mute your background. Here, let me see. Try that again. Oh, there you go. Okay, there you go. All right. And I can see what? Four, one, two, three, four, 16, 17, 18, 19 people. Where's Karen? Oh, where? Here. There she is. Oh, look so, at okay. the back. Hi, Karen. Hey, I'm loving me. Nice job, ladies. I see the Ingrid Wolfork crew. 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm getting my camera ready. Just one second. I see Actually, the let, through. let me move this a little closer so I'm not reaching. Okay, just a second. So this is bizarre Very because nice. this is the first time I've seen this painting done and it's kind of weird to see yourself multiple screens. Oh, everybody, they actually look like they should look. <laughs> I know, right? Courtney, Not we were a little afraid of this picture. It actually turned out pretty good. Uh, All right. <laughs> for some of us, for some of us only. Oh, look at the group, the Bethany group. Intermediate. Nice job, Jack. I see Ingrid. Ingrid's got a bunch of people in the background. Some people got extra bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can have as many bubbles as you want, right? Here, I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can get another angle. Okay, everybody say uh, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. All right. Awesome. Great job. Wow, I'm really proud of that. Wow, you guys made me look really good. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Exactly. Okay, well, you, made, you made us look good, Cheryl. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. So, oh, wait, Dorothy just popped in with her group. Hold on. Let me, I got to take another picture. Hold on. Okay, I'm back with another picture. Okay, all the groups there. Oh, okay. I got you now. Okay, and I'm going to do one more. I always do like a motion video just for fun. So if you want to rock your heads or, you know, something funny. There we go. <laughs> Peace signs are good. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, if you guys would follow us on Facebook, we would absolutely love that. Um, we're also on Instagram. We'd love for you to follow us there as well. Um, yeah, we're here if you need us for holiday parties, gatherings for the family, whatever, okay? And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the chat. Danny, can you put um, our web address there so people can, uh, can find us? And uh, I hope you had a good time. Uh, Courtney, I'll send you all kinds of follow-up information so we'll keep you posted. Um, and again, and everyone and Cheryl, everyone should still have your information for I think you have a pain and win that was on the flyer. Um, yes, as well as all of your information. So everybody should have this little piece of paper. Yeah, box with all the information as well. Absolutely correct. Uh, thank you for reminding me. About that. So nice when someone helps you with the promotion. <laughs> Girl, so, yeah, we're having a um. We're having a uh, paint and win. Uh, if you hashtag Studio 928 and you, you uh, put it on uh, Instagram or Facebook, we are doing a, draw a drawing on December 28th where we're offering a kit for four people for their family over the holiday. So uh, please take a picture of your work because I'm dying to see them. I'm uh, on Instagram. Are you putting that on the screen? It's already there? Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you guys can follow. All right, so, uh, um, I want to say thank you. I want to make sure, first of all, that I thank my subcommittee. I've got Melissa, Melissa Ingram, Laura Cobb, Wendy Odom, and Julie Stewart. Thank you, ladies, for helping us out with this. This was our first membership engagement activity, so I want to thank you all for participating. Cheryl, I really loved your packaging. I was so surprised to see how, how beautifully everything was nicely packaged. It looked very professional. Um, everything that you walked us through, you were very patient and kind, and I really enjoyed it. So um, I just want to say thank you to you as well. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me feel very good. <laughs> it was it was lovely. Perfect. <laughs> good, you guys. All right. So we'll be here. We can let you guys chat for a few minutes if you like. Otherwise, we disconnect right now. We play the credits and we leave our contact information on the screen. But other than that, yes, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being the first Jack and Jill to actually book with me. Finally! <laughs>
Chicago, don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forget. <laughs> you guys take care yeah. now. Thanks, you too. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. For anyone that won a prize, I will get it to you. I will, I will deliver. We like delivering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Melissa, you were awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Krista. Individual. 